Hey brothers and sisters, I wanted to come on here and do a video on this topic, and this topic is, do we need to speak in tongues in order to show proof of our salvation? I know a lot of Pentecostals teach this doctrine. They actually teach the trifecta of works. They, they say you must turn from all sin, live holy, and repent of all sins, and you must be water baptized, and once you do that, then you will receive the, you know, the Holy Spirit, and then you receive the gift of tongues to show proof that you are saved and yet that you're Holy Spirit filled. Now, I'm not going to go into tongues as a gift itself, but speaking in tongues as for needs to show proof of salvation, that's what we're going to talk about. Because Pentecostals believe that you need to speak in tongues to show proof that you are Holy Spirit filled. And I know a lot of people are feared by that because they don't have this gift. Well, let me tell you this. You don't need it to show proof of your salvation. Tongues is merely a gift, just like, you know, dreams and visions is a gift. Praying is a gift. People who plays and sings music is a gift. I mean, the list of gifts can go on so so long there's you know no gift is bigger than the other because they all are important because they all are given to the people to fulfill the calling in which the Lord has bestowed upon them for their life it works as a accordance to fulfill the calling that the Lord has called them to do but Paul never says in Ephesians 1 13 and 14 once you believe the gospel of truth the gospel of your salvation you are then sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. Then you will receive the gift of tongues. He never says that. Because you want to know something. The word of God is our only proof of salvation. Why is it? Because it lists all of God's promises. Because God's word is truth. And honestly, all Paul says in Ephesians 1, 13 and 14, this is a passage that talks about what happens after you believe. Because the nanosecond you believed, the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1, 1 through 4, the death, burial, and resurrection that Jesus died, shedding its precious blood on the cross of Calvary, paying the sin debt once and for all, past, present, and future, he was buried, and on the third day, he rose again for our justification. The nanosecond you believe that, you are then sealed and saved by the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. The Word of God is our proof of salvation because in the Word of God is all of God's promises of what happens when we are saved. That is our proof. Because Jesus is our cornerstone. He is our foundation. He is our proof. His word is our proof. There's nothing that we need to do to show proof of our salvation. Because the word of God is our proof. Now, should we walk as if we've been saved? Yes. But our actions doesn't need to anything. There's nothing that we need to receive to show our proof of salvation, to show that we are Holy Spirit filled. We are filled with the Holy Spirit the nanosecond we believe the gospel. We don't need to speak in tongues because the Pentecostals has taken this gift and twisted it and to make it seem as if this is what you need in order to show others that you are saved. Now for me, I, I never grew up Pentecostal. I know there has been many of you brothers and sisters that probably has, or have, you know, family members or friends that are still in this denomination of Pentecostals. And, you know, my best advice is to run from them because 
that teaching is false. They teach the trifecta of works. They say you must show proof of salvation. The only proof that you need to rely on is the word of God. There's nothing you need to prove to anyone because they have twisted and taken out of context the gift of tongues in order to say, this is how you're saved. And I know there's a lot of people who probably, who speaks in tongues and when they look on Pentecostal, you know, speaking this gibberish language to their congregation, they know that they're falsifying this gift. They're not really speaking in tongues, they're just speaking gibberish. They're trying to present themselves as holy, just like the Pharisees did. The Pharisees dressed, they prayed in the streets. They did all these things to show people that they're righteous and holy and trying to prove that they're in God's favor. But yet, Jesus called him a prude of vipers. Whitewashed tombs. They look pretty on the outside, but on the inside is filled with death. And so with that, my conclusion is you don't need to speak in tongues in order to show proof that you are saved. Because tongues is merely a gift, just like any other God-given gift, whether it's dreams and visions, praying, music. I mean, the list goes on. There's so many gifts that God has given to everyone. Everyone has a gift. Some people look down upon themselves because they don't have, you know, a gift of speaking in tongues or the gift of dreams and visions or, you know, the gift of evangelizing and preaching. Well, let me tell you this. God gives gifts to work in one accordance to what he has called you to do. I mean, the, the list goes on. There's many gifts and no gift is bigger than the other because they all are important. Praying, having... Praying is just as a greater gift than having dreams or visions or speaking in tongues. I mean, there's no, there's no greater gift because God has given you a gift, but it works in accordance to what he has called you to do and what he has called you to be. It works in that one accordance. But you don't need this speaking in tongues to be saved. The word of God is your proof. Because in that, in God's word, is all the promises that he has for what happens after you're saved. If you want to know what happens after you're saved, read Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. It talks about that you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. It never said that it never says that you will receive the gift of tongues to show proof that you are Holy Spirit filled. That is a man made doctrine and it's a false doctrine. It's taking a gift that God has given to some people and taking it out of context to make it seem as if that's how you show that you are saved. But brothers and sisters, I love you all. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day and God bless.